An error occurred. Wait, wait a moment, then retry. Let's try it again. I'm in the show, it says. You got that right. I'm on the show. <laughs> Someone said no. Some will take advantage. Try again. See? What is up, everybody? My name is Justin. This is Forever Self Employed, all about pressure washing and quote IQ. And in today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys a little bit of a story about how we lost over a job over $75 and whether or not you should negotiate with the customer. But first and foremost, I have to welcome the guest. Mike, how's it going? I would also like to welcome a guest. How are you? I'm, thanks for having me on, Mike, and for You're me welcome. having you on. Yes. Oh, I'm doing well. I, I trust that you had a joyous holiday and uh, ready to get after it in the new year. I was good this year, so uh, Santa didn't disappoint, if you know what I'm saying. I'm picking it up. Okay, before we get into whether or not you should negotiate with your customers, we do want to let you guys know that Quote IQ is giving a thousand dollars away. This is the real check right here. This is the check. Well, not the real one, but obviously it's virtual. But we will be giving away a thousand dollar check to somebody who downloads Quote IQ, leaves us a review, and uh, sends us a screenshot to admin at quoteiq.io. If you guys need help with that, there's a link in the comment section and the description with those exact step by step instructions. If you are a subscriber of the app, you actually get double entry, so be sure to send us a picture of your active subscription. But in three days, three days, we were giving away a check for a thousand dollars. So, and there's not like there's not a crazy amount of entries, Mike. So like really entering is, is you get some good chances of winning. Yes, I don't. I, I've not even been really keeping up on how many people have submitted. Do you know? It's not anything crazy. It's not. I don't even think that it's like more than like a hundred or so. So it's right. just like so that's kind of crazy. Like your odds of winning. Uh, are pretty substantial. So that's pretty freaking cool. Right. So check out the pinned comment. Check out um, the description in order to win three days away. And we're going to be giving it, we'll probably go live uh, January 1 and announce the winner. And then we're going to send you a big check. The other thing that I want to tell you guys about is uh, the resource page. We're doing 30% off uh, when you use code SANA at pwcourse.com. I'm going to show you guys here in just a second. Every course, 30% off, use code SANA. Um, and I'll leave a link for that in the comment section and the description. I'm just going to share this so I can show you guys real quick all of the uh, beautiful things that you can get. Um, all these courses, how to wash, how to stripe, Justin's Facebook ad strategy, how to sk scale, how to build a soft wash rig, the Christmas lighting boot camp. I mean, you guys name it, it's in here, plus all of the assets. There's a bunch of good assets in here. So if you're interested in it, be sure to check it out. Uh, that'll be the second link in the comment section description. That sale will end uh, January 1 as well. So anyway. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the topic of today's video. Mike, first and foremost, do you like to negotiate on price with customers? I like to negotiate price um, <coughs> with people that are trying to sell me something. You know oh, this. this. <laughs> Dude, I try um, to tell you all the time. So this is one of the things, it's kind of a higher level thought, but if you guys, you, you want to be like, you want to be like what you're going to attract. How you act is what you attract, okay? So what Mike does is every time we're in a buying situation, Mike tries to like haggle and like hit the people in the kneecaps to get them to come down. And I try to tell him like, hey, Mike, the more you do that, the more you're going to attract those kind of people to you, you know? What do you That's think true. about that, Mike? <laughs> well, I know that you hate when I do that. And uh, okay. it it's just I something that I love to do it. I love to be kind of a dick to people. Um, and I love to try to get a better deal. And it's in the grand scope of things, it's kind of funny. Like we're talking more like software related things of that nature, not, not, not services. Uh, so we've got a pool in my backyard. Okay. And this time of year, the leaves are falling like crazy, right? It's, it's winter, fall, whatever, just leaves are coming down. <clears throat> my wife, she's got a little, um, uh, battery powered, uh, steel blower. blower. And so she's out there, like three or four times a day blowing off the pool deck, right? Cause she can't stand it. And then we've got the vacuum in the pool. That's constantly going all day, uh, trying to collect all these leaves. We're sitting out there last night. It was relatively nice. And so we're sitting out there like in the lounge chairs and it looked like, like a winter wonderland, but it wasn't snow. It was just leaves constantly falling. And we just look at each other and she goes, I want to cut down those two trees. And I was like, do they offer any like, shade in the wind in the summer that we want does it offer any privacy and the answer to both of those were no she'd actually rather have more sun coming in and so uh she goes well let me think about it and i was like okay and then another big wind came and more leaves came falling down and she's like 
call Kent, who's uh, one of my friends who owns a tree service. And so I texted Kent. I was like, Hey man, I need two trees gone. And he goes, I'll come over tomorrow. So he came over, uh, he come and he's a buddy, right? And this is going to go all relate back to negotiating. Um, so he comes over, he is the best at what he does. He is highly skilled. He's an arborist. Like the dude is like top notch. And, and I know that he is also one of the most expensive people around, right? Regardless of what the service it is that he is providing. So I knew that it wasn't going to be too, you know, it was not going to be a very cheap endeavor, especially since these were two trees, like, you know, this big around, I don't even know how tall, <coughs> three or four stories, you know, house, like four stories high, huge. He comes over, we chit chat. I'm like, okay, how much? And he looks at him, he goes, uh, 2,500. Oh, and I just said, okay, when can you do it? Right. There was no negotiation. I know that he's going to do a good job. I know, uh, no damage is going to be, you know, incurred on my property and my trees are going to be gone and I'm not going to have to worry about it. I'm not going to negotiate. Right. And I, more importantly, I'm not going to negotiate with a friend. I don't want a friends and family discount. Like anytime somebody's like, Oh, Hey, can you do a better price? You know, we're buddies. I'm like, no F off. You're not my buddy. If you're asking me for a discount, right? Friends pay because they, I don't know that that's just one of my things, Justin, but yeah. Uh, do I negotiate in my business? There are, there is always a time to negotiate, right? I always take a hard stance, uh, in all of my videos about, Oh, never negotiate, you know, and and to some degree, I, I am very firm. You have to stand by your numbers. You have to stand by your value uh, and, and what you're offering. But depending on the time of year, depending on you know this customer and the scope and, and the value that they can bring to us, there is always a time where negotiation uh, can come into play. I tell my customers, my big commercial accounts all the time when I'm giving estimates, I'm like, hey, uh, you know, I'd love, I'd love to get this job. Um, please give me the last look. Right. And by telling them that, like, that means after they get estimates from everybody else, after I've done what I've done, you know, in the selling, in the selling process, um, I'm asking them for the last look. I'm asking them to give me the opportunity to come back and, uh, come back and, and negotiate a little bit if needed. There you go. We're going to go over some uh, specific instances to kind of take into consideration, whenever you're negotiating prices with the customers, I'm going to tell a story specifically about what happened. This guy called in for a house wash. Um, one of the things you got to keep in mind is the time of year, because uh, firstly it's winter for us, but it's also coming up on new year's and he was trying to get this house wash before new year. So anytime that happens, there's a little bit of a price hike. He was a little bit of a distance away from us. And so uh, we quoted him six seventy five. He wanted to get uh, the walkway leading to the front door cleaned. And so we just threw that in on top. And whenever we hopped on the phone with him, gave him the price, he goes, oh, well, can you also throw in the concrete that's underneath this uh, garage overhang? He wanted it done for free. And so, you know, we kind of thought about it for a minute. We said, okay, if you could do 675, we're good to go. He then came back and said, you know, I'm more at 600. Is 600 something you guys could do? But given all the factors and everything, which we're going to talk about the things to kind of consider whenever a customer's hitting you with a low ball price, um, it just we just kind of stood our ground on it. We didn't hear anything back from him, so I'm assuming that he found somebody to do it uh, for less than you know six seventy five or six hundred dollars. So, kind of in this situation, Mike, what are you thinking with regards to? Are you going to stand strong on six seventy five, or if the if the guys aren't busy, we're going to go ahead and make a move and uh, get it on the <laughs> yeah? Board. It's, like if we don't have a jam packed schedule, then by all means, I'm going to be a little bit more willing because it, it's it's twofold. A, I want to you know, have the guys running nonstop. So I'm making money. I want them to be running nonstop. So they're making money. And so I would rather miss the opportunity for an extra $75 than miss the entire opportunity for $600. Right. Yeah, and if you're quoting intelligently, if you're quoting for profitability, if you're quoting uh, the way that you need to be quoting in order to ensure that you're not just breaking even or, or possibly losing money. Like if you know how to quote and you know your business and you know your numbers, then you should have enough fluff built in to where you do have the ability to negotiate. Yes, my pricing is going to be higher than my competition's, right? And when customers do request, hey, can you throw in the front walk? Yeah, I'm going to throw it in. It makes them feel good. It's not really costing us a tremendous amount of time or money. And I've already covered that in my initial quote with the customer. So that's kind of where I'm at. So yeah, by all means, I will negotiate uh, in, in certain scenarios. 
Right. So the big thing that, you know, and I asked Jacob this because I, I landed the job to do a lot of marketing for them. And, and you know, we kind of went back and forth on it. I was just like, are you willing to lose it for $600? And he's like, yeah, at the time he was ready to lose it. I mean, we're coming up on New Year's, you know, they have other things that they want to do. So you kind of have to ask yourself that, am I willing to lose it for whatever their bottom line price is? And whenever you kind of draw that line in the sand, you got to be willing to stick with it. Like if I would have texted him today and said, hey, you know, yeah, we will be, we could do it for $600. It's just, you lose all of your leverage within a negotiation uh, at that point. So you got to be you willing. Know, to so one of the things, obviously I know that Jacob, he uses quote IQ and I know that he's got all of his, um, his follow-up emails in the sequence in place. And so it, when, when somebody declines an estimate or we mark it as declined, they are automatically put into uh, the sequence for declined estimates. Um, or even if it's not a declined estimate, even if it's just, Hey, we gave this guy a quote for 675 and he didn't answer like that dude's going to get a, an email or a text the next day. And probably a couple days after, uh, following up with them to see where he's at in his thought process. Has he booked the job? Has he moved forward with somebody else? Or is he waiting for something else? But, but I'm going to have systems in place. I do have systems in place that will ensure that I'm staying in front of this guy, regardless of the fact that, you know, he, he didn't pull the trigger on this day. So that's, that's a little bit of the negotiation and, you know, in three or four days, and I hope none of my customers are watching because I do have that in the sequence where I will say, Hey, if you get on the schedule today, we just had an opening and this is automated. We didn't have an opening, but if you get on the schedule today, we had an opening. I can get you, I can get somebody there this week. Um, you know, it, 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 it it's limiting the exposure that you talked about, about, uh, you know, limiting your negotiation skills or, or your, your, your positioning, because now you're, you are going back on that price. I use that tactic all the time. I'll be like, Hey, um, you know, I just had a cancellation. I could get somebody out there today and we can do it for, you know, $25 less or whatever the case is. Right. We actually just built in all of Mike's sequences into the email automation within Quote IQ. So if you guys have Quote IQ and you got the tier that has the email automation, all you got to do is come in here, click the uh, question mark, mark icon in the top right hand corner, and then you can actually import Mike's entire email sequence, um, pretty much every single email within here for when estimates are created, scheduled, decline, and paid. And so that we can kind of be following up with these people uh, automatically. And you don't even have to type it. All you got to do is go in there, kind of change your name, your company name, put those in place. And um, you got Mike's whole sequence right there. So just a little bit of a tip for you guys. Um, because it's huge, not having to think about all these uh, different emails. So that's a big question you have to ask yourself. When, when the customer kind of rebuttals and says, hey, can you do it for this price? Are you willing to lose the job at that price? For us, in this circumstance, with the time of year and everything else, we were willing to lose it. But a couple things to take into consideration is the time of the year. Okay, we know that it's winter. We know that jobs, it's not the spring. If it was the spring, like we're standing strong, like we're not moving, right? Because like the schedule's booked up. But if it's the winter, uh, we got a little bit more leeway to make you know some negotiations happen. We got to take into consideration our lead flow, right, Mike? Because if we got a ton of lead flow coming in, like I said, it's spring, we don't need to budge. But if the lead flow is kind of halted up and, and the guys aren't really working, it's like yeah, it, it there there is a there's a delicate balance, and <clears throat> we talk about it all the time, right? The more leads that you have coming in, uh, the more you can charge, and why would you possibly charge less or negotiate with somebody over here, right? That when somebody over here is willing to pay you more, right? I'm not going to go waste my time with, you know, a $500 job for a couple hours when I could get $800 over here for the same couple hours. So with that being said, yes, the time of the time of year, but most importantly, it is lead flow, but the time of year impacts your lead flow. Like we know uh, during the, the slow, the colder months, things slow down when it starts getting green and pretty outside and spring comes around. People are, are more in tune with the exteriors of their homes and getting it clean, the whole spring cleaning thing. And that's when the lead flow increases, your prices increase, your schedule goes out and that's where we want to be. Right. But as Mike mentioned, if there's nobody else over here, then uh, we should probably take the deal. Right. Start so, negotiating. Right. So time of year, lead flow. How inconvenient is the job for us? This job was particularly a little bit farther out of the way. They were going to have to drive like 45 minutes, I believe, to get to it. So that kind of plays in a little bit, too. You got gas time in there. You got windshield yeah. time. If you got any workers with you, like all that's taken into consideration. Um, right, Mike? Yeah, we just had a job that came up, um, came through Google. A uh, customer uh, hit us with a message and I said, okay, what's the address? And they wanted a house wash and a driveway cleaning. 
he gave me the address and it was in Bluffton, South Carolina, which is like, which is depending on where in Bluffton from, from our hub, where we keep all of our equipment. Um, it could be anywhere from 45 minutes to like an hour. Now this was like a 1300 square foot home. So the customer's house can also come into play on how we quote, like <clears throat> I, I'm in, in order for my business to leave where we're at and drive an hour there, an hour back for a 1200 square foot home, like that customer is not going to be willing to pay us what we need to make. Right. And so your pricing structure is also going to be one of the, the factors that comes into play. Like for all of that, right. I'm going to charge three or $400 more than I would if it was, you know, down the road, uh, in, in, in my city, because I've got costs, just like you said, the drive time, that windshield time is a killer an hour, both ways. You've got employees that you're paying, you've got the gas, you've got the wear and tear, and then you've got the job, right? All of that has to be paid for. Somebody's paying for it. And it's not going to be me. It's going to be the customer. They don't have to go with it, right? They can choose to call somebody else and get a different price. But if they want my company to come out and do it, they're going to pay a hell of a lot more if they're further away, if it's more inconvenient. So that was a great point. Another thing to get taken into consideration. Absolutely. How com- how inconvenient is the job? Another scenario is sometimes you get jobs where it's kind of like you, you kind of tell them a higher price because it's not really anything you want to do anyway. And so, um, just another thing to kind of take into consideration. And the last thing is, is that some, sometimes customers who want to negotiate on price aren't always the best customers to work for, right? Mike, have you ever had a scenario where, you know, somebody wanted to negotiate on price and they ended up being like way more picky or, you know, they nitpick things? Well, so what I have found is there are certain people that love to negotiate, right? And we, you know, at the start of this video, I I'd said that I do love to negotiate, um, but with, not with all things. What I have found traditionally those that want to negotiate those that hold, you know, they, they take a hard stance on price. Like this guy's like, yeah, I'm more good with 600 than 675. Right. That's the guy that is probably going to be when the job is done, he's going to start going, well, you missed that spot. You missed that spot. Why don't we back it down to 575 or I'm just going to pay you 500 because I'm not satisfied. Like they're setting the tone with the initial negotiation and, and, in, you know, a lot of people like myself will be like, yeah, can you do it for, you know, can you take $25 off? Do you have a triple A AAA discount? Do you have a senior citizens discount? Do you have a military discount? First responders, teachers, everybody, you know, wants to get a better deal. I get that. Um, but with that being said, uh, it, people that want to negotiate hardcore are probably not the ones that you want to be working for. And sometimes it's just easier to walk away. Some people just enjoy negotiating and you'll find it with uh, some ethnicities. It's, I don't think that's racist to say, right, Mike? But some ethnicities enjoy negotiation more than others. <laughs> yes. And when I and, and I, I was going to kind of allude to that. Right. Um, and as a business owner, the beautiful thing about living in America and working in a capitalistic society is we choose who we work for. Just because you call me doesn't mean I have to work for you. And traditionally, again, people from, you know, whatever the ethnicity is. But like you said, there are some that are, are more apt to, you know, they enjoy the art of negotiation. Those right. are the folks that, like I said, they tend to be a little bit more, they tend to be more picky. And then at the end of the job, they try to haggle again. So there's the the upfront negotiation and then there's the back end negotiation. And when I hear these people, when they call me and I talk to them or I see the names, I probably am not going to do any work for them. It's, it's that simple, Can't blame but, yeah. but also these same people, it's crazy because say they live in your neighborhood and you see, you know them and you know the address and okay, they called, I gave them a price, they negotiated, I walked away. And then I see who's actually doing the work. It's always a chuck in a truck. Doesn't matter if it's the lawn care guy. Doesn't matter if it's the pressure washing guy. Doesn't matter if it's the painter. It's always the lowest end person. They they go and they find the cheapest person that they can beat up. And the reason that it's a chuck in a truck, the reason that it's it's the, the low cost lawn care guy or the, the painter that's in as, you know, Geo Metro with the ladder strapped on top, right? They Those guys are the low balls low ballers in the market because they allow themselves to be taken advantage of. They allow people like this to determine how much they charge. If they were intelligent, they wouldn't be driving the geo Metro. They'd have a nice van because they were charging enough to afford a nice painting van to afford a trailer, not sticking in the back of the Ford expedition that my neighbor hires to do her yard. Right. It blows my mind. I've got a guy on the corner and we're not going to mention his name, but it's hilarious because just like it was yesterday, 
my wife and I, we were out, I can't remember if we were walking the dogs or riding bikes or whatever. And, um, I look over and every time this dude gets his, his name's Sonny. Every time Sonny gets his house pressure washed, it's every once, every couple of years, he calls me and I tell him, no, right. We're neighbors. And I say, nope, call somebody else because I know him. We, I, I've been down that road with him. He did the same thing when I owned the landscape business. He called, he got an estimate. We did it once. He said no more because you're too expensive. He has a different lawn, lawn care company come. And it's not, it's not, it's not ever like, every Monday or every Tuesday, like Miguel comes to my house, right? Like it's, it's once every month, he hires somebody, some new random company, low ball companies. You can tell just from the way they uh, present themselves and they roll up and I'm sure he says, okay, I need you guys to do everything and I'm going to keep you on board. You're going to be my guy. Well, he takes advantage of them. He beats them down on price. They, they do way more work than I know what he's paying for. And then the next time he hires, it's somebody else. It's unbelievable. So Never let customers dictate who you are, how you're going to run your business, how you're going to price, because they are going to keep you that in that 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 broke ass mindset, mentality, lifestyle, because you're going to get bullied by people that don't want to pay. Dang, Mike, I can tell you got a lot of aggression towards those kind of people. Um, and I it's not, like it's 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 not a those people thing. It's it's the type of of person it is it's not necessarily exactly what you're talking about yeah, yeah that's i don't, I don't want to, i don't want to get canceled over here avoid doing business with those types of people hey but look do business with quote iq because what do we do we actually give away free money for anybody who downloads quote iq leaves a review and sends us a screenshot to admin at quote iq dot io the all of the information is in the comment section and the description of this video this is the check someone's going to be holding this check uh, in three days so be sure to check it out first link yes the hey and one wizard right here you see this he says, hey, can I get a quote IQ hat and hoodie? Come on, guys. And he got, the please, this is sharp, isn't it? Um, but so we're just talking about giving away the $1,000. Juan Wizard was one of our winners. He's a quote IQ user and he won, what was it? Was it the pressure washing business starter kit? Uh, he won the window cleaning business starter kit. Win, it was like yeah, $3,000 in window cleaning equipment. Yeah. Like, so our winners, you know, they, 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 they I be, he, I, I'm sure he left a review, so I'm sure that he's. Uh, wouldn't that be great if he won again? We take good care of him, so uh, I wouldn't doubt it. So, That's can right. he get a Quote IQ hat and hoodie? We will have links coming out very soon with a uh, Quote IQ merch if you guys want to grab some. And it's, it's we make no money on it; it's only at cost. Um, and so, because we just appreciate anybody who wants to support, you know. Yeah, this stuff is sharp, though, isn't it? We need to get that one out. I don't know if that. I don't think that one's on the uh, store yet. No, it's not. Uh, let's see. We had a couple of good questions in here. Um, let's see. King Gorilla, y'all's hair looking good today. That was, that was nice. We appreciate I've got my that. hat on, but well, I think he must have been talking to you. The sides of your hair look really good today, Mike. Thanks, man. <laughs> hey, Mike, love your videos. I'm soaking up all the info like a sponge uh, to start working for myself. Thanks for all the free content, guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. Be sure to download Quote IQ. If you guys need help keeping up with customers, sending estimates, invoices, and collecting payments all for free, what a better deal. There's no better deal than that. Now, Payne's Pressure Washing, blacklist those customers. They only cause headaches. Within Quote IQ, we actually give you guys the option to blacklist customers. All you got to do is come into your contacts, uh, click on a contact, and then at the top here, you can actually blacklist this contact. In the event, in the future, they you know contact you to try to get a free estimate. You will then be notified that this is not a customer that you want to do business with, right, Mike? Because this was a this was a feature that you wanted in here, Mike. Specifically, yeah. so do you want to talk about it? Well, no, I mean, yeah, I do. I mean that that was that that is a feature that was not in uh, Quote IQ. I don't I don't think it's in any of the software that I've ever come across, and uh, it's something that I wanted in there because. When when you get to a point where your your business is is running and it's doing well, and you've got a tremendous customer base, you are not going to remember every single customer and how they you know interacted with you and and were they slow pay were they you know whatever the case was if they were pain in the ass like I'm probably not going to remember like I remember addresses and I remember I don't remember specific people so really um, even the ones that are pains in the ass because we have such a high volume of of customers that we're dealing with on a daily basis. <clears throat> so this was a feature that I wanted for myself. And, and, and what it does is when I go and give a quote to somebody, bloop, it pops it up and it's like up oh, blacklist. And then I can go down to the notes and see, yeah, this guy was slow pay. It took him three months to pay. You know, we, we don't, just like you said, they're, it's, they only cause headaches. So like eliminate that headache. We've got enough stress and headaches in our life. That's why we did quote IQ like we did to, to help eliminate a lot of the, the stress from running a business. 
Yep. So within a contact, you can actually put a note in here so that way you can remind yourself, like Mike said, this guy's slow pay took three months to pay. The other thing is you get multiple addresses in here, as well as another beautiful thing is you can actually keep track of any estimates or invoices or inspection forms that you've done for that customer. So I know for myself, whenever I first started my business, I would do a job for a customer and then I would completely forget the next year when they'd contact me how much I charged them. This gives you the ability to not only see every single job that you've done for that customer, but how much you charged and what the job entailed and just all the good information that you need to be keeping up with every single year. Yep. So it's good stuff, right, Mike? You got that right, Stallion. Uh, let's see. We had a couple other good comments in here that I wanted to talk about. Um, let me swap back over. Um, somebody said, I usually don't enter because they want you to fill out your personal information. And I have had too many calls from people I don't know. If you guys want to enter to win the thousand dollar check from Quote IQ, we won't call you. I mean, I don't think we're going to call them, right, Mike? What are we going to call you and tell you? We're we're only going to call one person, and we're going to tell that person that they won. So, but I promise you now that if Kenneth Hobson wins, I'm not calling him. I'm going to the next winner. <laughs> Bye, so Kenneth. Kenneth. Maybe don't maybe don't uh, enter, Kenneth. Um, let's see. Uh, thank you all for all the help and hard work uh, that y'all do for us. Appreciate it, John. We appreciate you. Leazy, FPV, these live streams are inspirational. Thank you, man. We appreciate that as well. Been working 30 years without any help. I am I might check it out, but I never have issues with non-payment, and my quotes are accepted over 80% of the time. I will tell you this. If you have a close rate of over 80%, which is something that you can, that you can monitor with the Quote IQ dashboard, you are not charging enough money. Right, Mike? Yeah. Ed, I, I'm sure that your business is awesome. And maybe 80% is just kind of an arbitrary number that you threw up to signify that you have a high close ratio. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, Justin's dead nuts on. If you're closing 80%, your prices are too low. Raise your prices. You want to be at 50%. Uh, and then you can make adjustments from there. If you start, you know, if you're not, if your schedules, I bet your schedule's packed too, right? Because if you're closing 80%, people are like, yes, John or Ed, please, please come and clean my stuff before you realize that you're not charging enough. I could right. be completely off base. I mean, you have been doing this for 30 years and I respect that. Um, but uh, that's just, that's just one of those little metrics, right? Like, it, it, and that's why we have our close ratio at the top of our uh, dashboard analytics in quote IQ is because that is so important. I know that if it's 80%, like, damn, that means either I'm the best salesman in the entire world or my prices are too low. Right. Well, and let's be honest, it's probably the latter. I believe that's what it is. Maybe the former. I don't either way. Uh so yeah, prices need to come up because essentially when you start raising your prices, yes, you will close less people, but imagine doing less work and actually making the same, if not more, money. And that's essentially why you want to monitor your close ratio. So that way you can kind of keep it on whether or not your prices are too low. Payne's pressure wash, he's been watching us for a long time. He's in the inner circle and he says prices are too low. He already knows, right? Um, let's see what else we got. I know we had another one here. Somebody asked what's windshield time. So for anybody that has employees, or even if you work for yourself, windshield time is just the amount of time that you're sitting behind the windshield. So we talked about earlier, how inconvenient is the job for you on whether or not you'll negotiate with the customer. If you got to travel 45 minutes an hour, that's a lot of windshield time back and forth. That's a lot of time wasted, especially if you got somebody on the clock for all that time. Right, Mike? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. We, we actually fired an entire neighborhood when I had my landscape business. Again, it was in Bluffton where we were talking about, and I want to say we had three or four days worth of work in this neighborhood. And I can't remember how many yards it was like 30 or 30 yards, right? It was a retirement community. I've talked about this in the past on the channel. Um, but I was paying four guys to sit in the cab of an NPR flatbed driving an hour and an hour back uh, every single, well, for like three, three to four days out of the week. And, at, at, and so this, this kind of goes back to the, those metrics that are important. Um, I started building my customer base significantly larger, closer to, you know, where we, where we our hub, where we, you know, keep all of our stuff. And as, as that customer base started growing, I, I was looking at like, the, the how much we were making over here and with with the two hours every single time all the labor cost of, of just driving and i was like it doesn't even make sense to to do lawn care over here because you know the margins aren't that great whatever but so we basically said okay everybody here uh at the end of this month we're no longer going to be servicing you're going to have to find somebody else and i pulled everybody out and we just focused our marketing and our ad spend 
uh, growing the business over here. And, and we ended up making more money because it was just smarter business. And so those are the things that you really need to keep your eye on. But essentially, like Justin said, windshield time is the amount of time you're sitting behind a windshield, not getting paid. And so that's one of the costs that you really need to be aware of within your business. If you're somebody who's not tracking expenses, definitely you're somebody who needs to quote IQ because how are you going to know how much you're really making if you don't know how much uh, it's costing you? So if somebody is an employee, you definitely want to be aware of windshield time and how, how long they're actually, um, you know, in the car for. Ed actually responded, Mike. He said, I'm charging a minimum of $150. I charge $5 per pane. I'm assuming that's windows. The average house is, I do is $240 and then we knock off in an hour. Okay. So like if we look at it, this, for example, if Ed was able to raise his average ticket price from $240, let's say even, you know, 10, 20% and, and got it closer to 300, 320, that compounds over the course of a year. He could take himself and his business from making like a hundred grand and maybe like, you know, 125, 130, just because he had a small increase in price. And I would say to Ed as well, if he's closing that high, why don't we add on some other services and bundle those services for those customers so we can- Right. <laughs> and I would also say, I don't know, Ed. I don't know where he's at. I don't know what his overhead structure is. Um, but one of the things that we do have in Quote IQ, again, because it's so important in your business, is the hourly rate calculator, right? And the hourly rate calculator, what this does is it takes all of your, your costs. It takes all of your overhead and then it generated your labor costs, you know, what you're paying yourself, insurance, rent, you know, whatever it is. Quote IQ is an expense and it's also tax deductible. But what you can do is you enter all that stuff in and it will generate a break even number that tells you how much you need to make per hour based on your business's uh, expenses and overhead, right? And so then you can put in your margin that you want to make. So say you want to make 70% margin on top of your hour, you know, your, your break even. Uh, it will generate that number. Then you know what your hourly rate should be. I don't know what Ed's overhead is, but $150 just to show up in my opinion, you know, I think that's on the, on the light side, but again, I don't know your business. So with all of that being said, um, the hourly rate calculator is something that, that would be good to uh, take a look at just to make sure that you're, you know, you're, you're running your business intelligently. Not that I'm suggesting Ed is not. Also, I would say that, <clears throat> um, you know, a 240 minimum or a 240 average ticket price is not bad, but like Justin said, you bump that up and this is my challenge for you, Ed. Uh, when when you start, you know, this new year, I would love for you to increase everything by 15%, right? 20%. Do it at 20%. You are giving yourself a 20% raise. And I guarantee you, you're not going to lose business. You're going to make up for any lost business with the increase in profit. So I would love, <coughs> excuse me, I would love for you to do that. So we want if we want to talk about windshield time, Ed says that you know he's done in in an hour, it makes two hundred and forty bucks. Well, what if he was able to turn that customer into two from two forty into like twelve forty, right? And he was able to up the ticket a thousand dollars and say he's only going to be on this job for you know uh, th this is the only job he's going to be on for the day. My buddy Aaron kind of coined this is like the high ticket philosophy, right? So instead of us doing five different customers at 240 and having to drive all over the place and having all this window time and gas expense and all this other stuff. If we can upsell them on other services that they need, and we can only have to do one property and make, you know, 1240, essentially what five other customers would be for Ed, then why not do that? You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Ed's business or that he's not trying to do that or whatever the case may be. I'm just giving you guys an example of if you're in uh, you know, offering a service is a service that's kind of a lower ticket that you have to make up in volume, which you lack in ticket size. Let's see if we can add on other services and actually bring that ticket size up. So that way we can mitigate the cost of, of travel and acquiring more customers and all that kind of other stuff. Cause if you think about it, if you could turn one customer into a $1,200 customer or six customers into a $240 customer, you won't what, think about the marketing costs. Think about the people that you have to talk to and quote and collect from it goes from six people just to one. You know, so different way of looking at it. Uh, Dylan says, is there anywhere I can search for information on mixed ratios for chemicals like SH degreaser and other types of surfaces? Yes, you Tell can. Right, <laughs> right you. now, 30% right. off the resource page, how to wash. Get all of the information that you're looking for at your fingertips in one place. Brought to you by the core four. There you go at pwcourse.com. Save 30% when you use code Santa at checkout. I will show you this as well. Um, if you're just looking to, you know, to mix bleach, you can check out our uh, mix calculator. 
which is either on this page or the settings page. I cannot remember, but the mix calculator is absolutely free and it's going to tell you what ratios you should be using on what services. It's under the resources tab. We got a bunch of different resources in here for you guys. Come into the mix calculator. It's going to tell you what percentages on what services. It's going to tell you like if let's say you're doing a vinyl house and you need a 1.5% mix and your SH is 12% concentrate and you have a five gallon bucket, you know you need 4.4 gallons of water and 0.6 gallons of SH. So if you need help mixing bleach, this is a free tool within the resources section of Quote IQ. Be sure to download it and leave it a review so that way you can be entered for a chance to win $1,000. Right, Mike? $1,000. Yes, someone's getting a big check here really soon. We're excited about it. Uh, let's see what else we got. Payne had Payne's pressure washing had a great point here. Ed, take your next five quotes and bump your price and see what happens. Because why not? Like, let's test over the next five, maybe even ten customers, and see what your close ratio turns out to be over ten. And um, you know, I did this a couple years ago. Well, many years ago when I had my landscape business, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and tell every single customer that we're raising our prices. And I can't remember if it was a percentage or a dollar amount. It must have been a percentage. And, you know, I was thinking to myself, this could either be good or this could be horrible. It could be good if people are like, yeah, you know what? They do a good job. They're consistent. They're here when they say they're going to be. We don't have issues. Um, or it could be like, yeah, screw that. I can go buy, you know, get somebody else to do it for cheaper. <laughs> it could have gone either way. What I discovered was, I didn't lose, but maybe one or two customers over price. Uh, so something something to think about, right? Like sometimes you have to push beyond your comfort level. And by pushing on, you know, price, it is definitely pushing, you know, that comfort level. So, you know, yeah, pain, pain was dead nuts on. I, I was I was saying the same thing. Raise prices by 20, you know, raise pricing by 20% and see what happens. You can always come down, right? And do it quote by quote, right? When 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 you're giving your next quote, Add an extra hundred bucks on and just see what happens. Have your normal price, $200, $240, whatever the case is, and add on a hundred bucks just to see what happens. And I want to hear from you. I want to know what happens, Ed. Right. Ed said he offers a bunch of different services. We do gutters, soft wash, roof demossing, and power washing. So Nice. There you go. Any suggestions for somebody doing odd jobs uh, that they're uncertain about as far as what they should charge hourly? Maybe a hundred to two hundred dollars? <clears throat> excuse me. Um, it, again, like, is this a side hustle? Are you doing it on the weekends? I see you've got a, a, a name that says wicked clean homes. Like again, like you still have costs associated. If it's a legitimate business, I don't know if it is, if it's a side hustle, then, you know, it can be some arbitrary number, I guess, but I think it's important to understand, you know, kind of what the market rate is for whatever service it is that you're providing, whether it's painting, whether it's hauling junk away, right? You don't want to undercut the market because not only are you undercutting competition, you're undercutting what you could put in your pocket. So something to think about. Absolutely. And just another thing is, is you want to charge as much as the market will bear. So just, you always kind of want to be pushing the limits with regards to how much you're pricing, as well as like Mike said, first and foremost, knowing your cost. So that way you know you're profitable. So that's why using a tool like Quote IQ can help you out. I think as far as doing odd jobs, though, you're in a situation where there's more odd jobs than there are people providing the service of odd jobs. So I think you're in a position to actually make some really good money there. So um, let us know how that goes for you. What was the discount code? If you go to pwcourse.com, code oh, Sam. Oh, oh. Code Santa will save you 30% of checkout for the next like three days, I think. I think that's it. And then, and then yeah. the deal's done. Uh, okay. A couple more questions, Mike. Let's see. I'm about to start a pressure washing business. I'm 18 years old. Any advice for me? I have a hard time. I've had a hard time people taking me seriously. People don't take them serious, Mike. Travi. <clears throat> okay. Um, is your name Travis or is it Travi? Because if it's Travis, I wouldn't take you serious if I was calling you Travi because it sounds like a little kid. So your new name is Travis. Uh, I'm kidding, Travi. Uh, age should not dictate price. If you're knocking on doors, right, and you look super young and maybe you're not in like, there, there are things that an 18-year-old can do. I know several 18-year-olds that are making hundreds of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year pressure washing. <clears throat> they've, they've built a website that performs. They have got uh, an online presence that isn't necessarily around 
who they are, right? It's around the services they provide, the benefits they provide to the customers. So it doesn't have to be about you. It has to be about the business and what your value is that you're offering to your customers. You know, when I was 18, I looked super, super young. And so probably if I like walked up and knocked on the door and was like, hey, you know, my name's Travi. I own a pressure washing business. I would love to give you a price on your house. Most homeowners would probably look at me and be like, eh, probably not as serious. So what I would suggest if, if, if that's what you're running into, then maybe just run into, you know, kind of focus in on the online marketing, maybe do some Facebook ads, post in the groups, you know, where it's not necessarily about you because like I've got guys that have worked for me over the years that were very young. Right. And I'm the one that's selling. So yeah, it's easier for me to, you know, kind of purvey uh, or, or put out like a professional vibe uh, because of age and whatnot. So I don't know, Justin, you, you started doing this type of work when you were really young. So you can speak to this as well. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that, Travi, if other people aren't taking you serious or you feel like they aren't taking you serious, you probably don't take yourself very serious, okay? So if I was like, Travi, tell me about your equipment, it's probably something you threw together. If I was like, tell me about how you're pre presenting yourself, it's probably something that you just thought of off the top of your head. How are you marketing yourself? You're probably you're not taking your own business very serious. When you make a transition and you go, I'm going all in on this, I don't care if you're 12 years old. If you were serious and you looked the part and you acted the part and you talked as if other people would fall in line with that. So I would say first and foremost, figure out how you can take your own self serious first and then others will take you serious. We got a guy in the inner circle that's was it was in a senior year of high school, did over $100,000. He's going to be a six-figure earner this year. And he never once mentioned anything in the group about anybody taking him serious. He's got contracts with neighborhoods. He does government con contracts. He does crazy stuff because he takes himself serious. He's got serious equipment, serious marketing, serious everything. So I would say first step, Travi, is to kind of take yourself serious and then others will do the same. So I like it. Uh, Cyrus, how do you guys power wash concrete right next to a pool? Do you treat it with SH? Thanks. Yeah, so the majority of pools are bleach or chlorine pools, right? We use a lot of the guys watching this use chlorine that they buy from pool supply houses. Um, <laughs> obviously you want to mitigate the amount of chlorine that goes into a pool. I have a pool, it's a saltwater pool. And that's kind of a misnomer because basically, you know, salt sodium, it, it's, it's still a bleach, the, the salt water it's, and I can't remember what it's called, but it basically turns salt into um, the, 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 the chlorine. And so by introducing a minute amount of chlorine into any pool is not going to have any significance on the pH balance of that pool, right? You'd have to drop a ton of super, super strong chlorine in to have any impact, right? Plus, you know, you got to shock your pool, you know, once a week anyway. So you're doing them a favor. You're saving them some money. Use it as an upsell. It seems to be a concern for a lot of people. Like they're like, how do you wash next to pools? And it's like, if you get a little dirt in there, it's okay. Like it's just part of the deal. I mean, the, I think the customer would much rather have a clean concrete surface and have a little bit of the dirt in the pool. It'll disperse as well once it hits the water. <laughs> well, it's not only going to disperse, but you know, they've got the vacuums, they've got the filtration systems. Um, it, it's, you know, obviously you don't want to make a tremendous mess, right? You want to work away from the edge of the pool. You want to mitigate, you know, run, run, run off into the pool. And, and there are ways to do this. Pools, pool ducks are, are sloped away from the, the pool uh, and designed with intent to, to do that very thing. So, you know, if you work intelligently and you don't just go in there blasting like a crazy person, then you're not going to create a huge mess. My lawn care business, when I had it, that was an issue because the guys would get out there with their leaf blowers and they blow leaves everywhere or grass clippings, you know, like they're running the zero turn the wrong way and the discharge is that way or, you know, whatever the case is and they throw a ton of grass into the pool. That's when you go and you get the customer's net and you start, you know, going through and, and getting all the excess out. So just, just be aware of your surroundings, be cognizant of your customer's property and, and leave it better than when you got there. Boom. I think that's an excellent tip. Okay. Uh, soft wash general says quote, IQ is a no brainer to CRM tailored for us. I just signed up looking forward to using it hundred percent. Thank you so much. You guys check out quote IQ first link in the comment section description. Also, you can save half off for the next little while at my quote IQ com. Um, we're, we're going to be doing away with that because we're actually going to be bringing in an affiliate deal. So if you guys want to save half off of your subscription, go to my quote IQ.com, go to the subscription tab and you'll be able to save half off uh, for the first three months of using it. So 
Definitely a little perk, a little benefit. If you guys, like I said before, if you want to win the $1,000, all you got to do is download the app, leave a review, and send us a screenshot of the review. And if you're an active subscriber, you'll get uh, another entry. So check that out. I'm going to see if there's any other comments in here, and then uh, we'll probably wrap from there. Huh, Mike? Yeah. Uh, are there legal issues I could run into by cleaning trash cans? So I don't... I don't think there's legal issues that you could run into uh, by cleaning trash cans. And I'm wondering if you're talking about because in theory, when you hire a trash company, a private trash company, then, you know, you're essentially renting or leasing the can. But I don't think that's the issue. Maybe it's the discharge of the guck from inside of the trash cans. Once you're done, you know, there are trash can um, like, awesome big trucks that like come in, they spray, they just, you know, they dump it into their own container containers and then they discharge out wherever they do that. Um, you do have the clean water act. So in theory, if you're, you know, washing cans at somebody's house and you pour it down the drain, then you're in violation of that. Uh, is anybody going to like, I, I don't think anybody's ever been arrested or fined for that. Also, as far as a clean water act, um, it's the homeowner's responsibility, not yours. So I think you're safe. Absolutely. And I mean, you know, with regards to cl can cleaning, can cleaning is a good entry level service to get your foot in the door with customers you wouldn't have been able to otherwise, unless you buy a huge rig. I wouldn't advise that you build your whole business around can cleaning, but definitely leverage those customers into, into more work. Uh, Eddie says, where do we send the screenshot of the review? Admin at quoteiq.io. I'll put it in the chat as well as it's in the uh, comment section and the description. We'll get time for like another question here. Let's see what we got. Hey, one more question. Do you need any special solution of getting rid of stains from leaves on concrete? Yeah. So, so the, um, what is it? Uh, tannin is what's in the leaves. Uh, a good bleach solution is good. Yep. So, Anyway, wrapping up thoughts for you guys with regards to ever negotiating with customers, you want to take a couple of things into consideration. What is the time of year? What is the lead flow into my business? How inconvenient is this job for me? What's the travel time look like? Is this something that I really want to do? And sometimes you have to keep in mind uh, when you're doing work for customers that are negotiating with you, it might not always be the best scenario because they're not the best people to work for. Like dealing with Mike is kind of a pain in the ass. I'll be honest with you guys because he likes to negotiate with, uh, with people, right, Mike? I do. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, sweet. So always ask yourself, are you willing to lose it? And uh, that's a good question. So Mike, anything else for the stream? No, I think that's it. You know, go download quote IQ, uh, review it and uh, send us a screenshot of that review when a thousand dollars, we are offering uh 30% off everything on the resource page at pwcourse.com. Use promo code Santa. And, um, Oh, the, the one thing that we did not mention is uh, the 100K blueprint, local DOM 2, uh, the, the, the 100K blueprint. It's something that we have been working on, gosh, for about six months now. It is the most in-depth training that we've ever put out as far as the marketing and growth of your business. Um, we're going to, we're going to teach something that we've never taught before, which is our four phase system, the BOA system. Uh, and uh, if you guys want more information on that, we'll put a link somewhere someplace. Uh, but you can get, you can sign up and, and when it's ready, we're January is when, uh, we're going to debut this thing, but it is going to be something that is going to have a huge impact on a ton of people. So looking it good. It is literally our best marketing. Like we've never given away the stuff in this course and it is uh, incredible. So I can't wait to share it with you guys, but anyway, until next time, I'll get that money, baby. Peace. <laughs>